some dad called me a faggot to their kids, so not in front of my face, and I heard it, my mom, she got really angry. So the feeling I would associate to, to being a queer person there was definitely anxiety, uh, a lot of struggle, uh, being alienated, being oppressed. Um, then as a human being it's great because uh, you get access to the countryside, you're very free. So a lot of freedom, definitely a lot of happiness into that. Yeah, so my identity started to come out, I think especially as I started, especially actually even quite young. I remember I was doing dance when I, I think I was six or seven and uh, everyone knew about it and suddenly I was, the, um, the teachers made me feel uncomfortable about that and suddenly I started playing football. Don't know why, but that was the way I was pushed. <laughs> Als ich da auf dem Land gelebt habe, da war mir glaube ich nicht so richtig bewusst, was queer überhaupt ist und ob ich das bin. In der Schule haben wir da nie drüber gesprochen. Ich glaube, das hätte mir vielleicht geholfen. I wasn't really coming out until I left the island. I didn't experience a huge amount of direct discrimination. But there was a lot of situations, maybe third-party discrimination, where I could, have, I was part of a conversation, and someone else had come out, and I was seeing the sort of behind closed doors conversation occurring um, about them, which then meant I didn't want to come out because I didn't want to experience the same thing. Um, I did a lot of volunteering in St John's, actually, in the village with the youth service, and while it wasn't illegal to be queer and work in the youth service. There was a lot of social stigma that, especially in the small village, could have meant I would have received backlash working with young adults, which could have put pressure on me. I was always interested in fashion uh, since I was 11 years old, so I started dressing up or taking care of my outfits. And I think people didn't, didn't like it. Um, it was too expressive and too colorful, I guess, for someone born with a penis. So I remembered when I was 22 and a half, I remembered the scene of uh, my mom and I being in a supermarket at the cheese uh, area and some dad called me a faggot to their kids, so not in front of my face. And I heard it, my mom, she got really angry. And what I could only do in that time, it was just like, tell my mom, don't make a scene, it's nothing, I just go. My brain was just protecting me. I didn't really know how to handle all that kind of situation. And my parents were definitely reactive to that, but like on an angry way. And I was not comfortable with that. And I had viel so in the in der christlichen Kleinstadt, in der ich später gelebt habe, in Dänemark, um, habe ich viel Gegenwind gehabt. Oder ich habe viel, also ich habe mich auch selber da reingestellt. Also ich habe um, hab das auch irgendwie provoziert. Also so, ich wollte auch über diese Themen sprechen, weil ich fand, dass das wichtig ist. Und deswegen hat mir das nicht so viel ausgemacht, wenn ich das Gefühl hatte, jetzt wird über mich gelacht darüber oder so, weil ich da irgendwie eine Stärke drin gefunden habe. So die Unterschiede zwischen der Großstadt und der Kleinstadt oder dem Dorf ist eben, dass das Dorf so klein ist. Also da kennen alle einander. Und das ist irgendwie schön, weil sich um dich gesorgt wird, aber du kannst da auch nicht richtig draus ausbrechen. Oder es ist jedenfalls recht schwierig. Wenn du queer bist, ähm, bist du erstmal queer und dann musst du halt Glück haben, dass du in einem Dorf bist, wo die Leute da irgendwie nicht so viel gegen haben, weil sonst bist du da für immer unten durch. I realized at one point that I was adapting myself going there, so I would dress differently. Still me, but like a different me. And actually the first time that I've went fully as me was very recently and I just decided to take my festival clothes and I went to a festival and then I was going to my parents and that feels good and um, I feel like now I'm just ready to be fully myself there and not give a fuck about what people think uh, more than I used to be. I couldn't imagine myself moving back to the countryside, not in the current, not in who I am at the minute. I'm very comfortable with who I am and I think in general the countryside just isn't for me. I've managed to evolve and become a very different person in the city. Wenn ich jungen queeren Leuten auf dem Land, die auf dem Land leben, was mitgeben sollte, dann wäre das, glaube ich, ähm, zu sehen, was sie glücklich macht. Also, also das, das klingt so krass banal, aber ich würde einfach sagen, so finde, 
finde die Sachen, die du jetzt gerade machst, kannst, also es kann helfen, Leute zu finden, denen es ähnlich geht. Ähm, das kann zum Beispiel im Internet sein. Ähm, wenn du gerne zeichnest, dann zeichne ganz viel. Also ich möchte jetzt nicht empfehlen, zieh einfach in die Großstadt. Also ich weiß nicht, also das kann vielen helfen, aber ich glaube, das, das hilft gar nicht unbedingt. Es ist nicht für alle unbedingt das Richtige. Wenn dir das Video gefallen hat, dann likes gerne und follow Enter. Pfff. <laughs>